<clears throat> Agur, also called Gimmer, prepared ale for the gods after he had acquired the great kettle, which has been told of. Odin came to the feasting with Frigg, his wife. Thor did not come, since he was out east, but Thor's wife Sif was there. Bragi came with his wife Ethan. There, Tyr was there as well. He was one-handed because Fenrir had bitten his hand off when he was chained. Njorth was there with his wife Skati, and his children Frey and Freya. Vitar, son of Odin, was there. Loki was there, and so were Frey's servants, Bigvir and Bela. There were many other gods and elves as well. Aegir had two servants, Fimafeng and Eldir. Shining gold lit the hall, and the beer served itself. It was a great place of peace, and everyone praised how good Aegir's servants were. Loki could not tolerate hearing good things about servants, and so he killed Fimafeng. Then the Aesir shook their shields at Loki and shouted at him and drove him out into the forest and went back to drinking. But Loki came back, and in the darkness outside, he met Eldir. Loki said, Tell me, Eldir, before you take another step forward, what are the gods sitting in there talking about over their beer? Eldir said, They're comparing their weapons and judging their readiness for war of the elves and gods sitting inside, not one is your friend. Loki said, I will go into this Aegir's hall and uh, see this feast. I will bring them slanders and rumors and mix their mead with misery. Eldir said, You know that if you go into Aegir's hall to visit this feast, bringing slanders and rum rumors to spill out on the floor, they will wipe those words right off, right off on you. Loki said, uh, You know, Eldir, if you and I were to compete at exchanging insults, it would be lucky for me if you said too much. Then Loki went into the hall, and when the feasters saw who had come in, they went silent. Loki said, <clears throat> I come thirsty into this hall, I, Loki, after a long road, to ask the gods to offer me just one drink of their famous mead. Why are you so silent, you proud gods? Why do you say nothing? You ought to show me to my seat at such a feast, or else uh, order me to leave. Bragi said, The gods will never show you to a seat at this feast. The gods know what company they want to share a happy evening's drinking with. Loki said, You remember uh, Odin when in bygone days we blended our blood? Uh, you told me that you would never taste a drink that was not served to us both. Odin said, Get up, Vithar. Let this father of wolves take a seat and have a drink. Let's not let Loki slander us here in Aegir's hall. Then Vithar stood up and served Loki a drink. Before he drank, Loki said, Hails, gods and goddesses, all the high and holy Aesir, oh, except for that one god who sits furthest down the bench, uh, that one, Bragi. Bragi said, I will give you a horse and a sword. I offer you these freely and a ring, but in, in exchange, please don't slander the gods. Don't awaken their anger. Loki said, Since one of you had a treasure or horse to give. Of all the gods and elves inside this hall, you're the biggest coward. Bragi said, If we were outside and you had not come inside Aegir's hall, I would be holding your severed head. I'd pay you back that way for all your lies. Loki said, You're brave while you're sitting, but you wouldn't do that, Bragi, you bench warmer. <laughs> Go ahead, strike me if you're so angry. A brave man wouldn't be afraid to do it. Ethun said, I beg you, Bragi, think of your children by blood and by adoption, and don't slander even Loki here in Aegir's hall. Loki said, Silence, Ethun. I don't think there's any woman who's more lustful than you. I mean, not since you wrapped your pretty arms around the killer of your brother. Ethun said, I will not slander even Loki here in Aegir's Hall. I will calm you, Beer Madden Bragi. I do not want you two to fight. Gefhun said, Why should two gods exchange insulting words in here inside this hall? I think Loki is a cheerful fellow. Everybody loves him. Loki said, Silence, Kithyun. I remember that boy who seduced you into his bed, that handsome boy gave you a, a necklace and you opened your thighs to him. Odin said, You're mad. Loki, out of your wits. If you want to make Greyfun angry, I think she foresees the facts of all living things as well as I do. Loki said, Silence, Odin. Uh, you always judge battles unfairly for humans. You have often given defeat to the better side when you shouldn't have. Odin said, you know, even if I did judge unfairly and made the better side lose, I know that you, 
for eight years lived on earth down below as a cow in milk and as a woman, and you've given birth to children. I call that a pervert's way of living. Loki said. But people say that you practice womanly magic on Samsi, dressed as a woman, and you lived as a witch among the humans. I call that a pervert's way of living. Frigg said. You should not discuss your histories openly in front of everyone. Whatever you two gods went about doing in your younger days, that belongs in the past and should stay there. Loki said. Silence, Frigg. Uh, you're Fjorgian's uh, girl, and you've always been lustful. Think of when you, uh, Odin's wife, accepted both Vili and Ve into your embrace. Frigg said. You know, if I had a son like Balder sitting here with me in Aegir's Hall, in the presence of these gods, I declare you would never come out alive. You'd be killed shortly. Loki said. <laughs> you must want me to recount even more of my mischief, Frigg. After all, I'm the one who made it so that Balder will never ride home again. Freya said. You are mad, Loki, when you boast of your sins. I believe that Frigg knows everyone's fate, even if she shall not speak of it. Loki said. Silence, Freya. You are not free from faults. I know you too well. You've played the whore with every god and every elf who sits in this hall. Freya said. You speak lies, and soon this kind of talk will cause you real trouble. The gods are angry at you, and all goddesses too. You will go home friendless. Loki said. Silence, Freya, you were a witch, uh, and have dealt many curses. I hear the gods found you lying with your brother, and that you farted then, Freya. Njord said. <laughs> it is but a small matter. Whether woman sleep, whether their own men or others, but it's a surprise to hear such a sissy god talking here when he, he's born children. Loki said. Silence, Njorth. Uh, you were sent from the west as a hostage from the gods um, to the daughters of ha uh, Hymir, who used your mouth as a urinal, and you uh, tasted plenty of piss. Njorth ah. said. Uh, I've had some good from that. When I was sent from the west as a hostage for the gods, I fathered a son, beloved by all, considered a hero among gods. Loki said. Stop this now and you have control of yourself. I will not conceal this any longer. I know that you fathered your son Frey with your own sister, and I expect that you've done even worse. Tyr said. Frey is the best of all the gods. In the holy halls of Asgard, he doesn't make girls weep, nor causes trouble for women. He frees captives from their chain. Loki said. Silence, Tyr. You don't know how to settle disputes between men. I'm thinking of when uh, your right hand, which Fenrir, my son, bit off. Here said. I lost that hand. You lost that son. We both suffered loss. Your son isn't doing well either. He remains forever in chains, waiting for Agnarok. Loki said. Silence, Tyr. Or don't you know that your own wife had a son by me? Oh, you poor fool. I'll never pay you a penny in compensation for that. Frey said. I see that wolf sitting and drooling till Ragnarok comes, and you'll be the next one chained up, you evildoer, if you don't close your mouth. Loki said. You had to pay money to get yourself a bride, and you gave up your famous sword, so when the giants ride to Asgard, you won't be able to fight. Vigvir said. If I had a noble family and a grand hall like Frey does, I'd beat that liar down to his marrow, break every bone and limb in him. Loki said. This little fellow wagging his tail, scavenging for master's scraps. You're always in your master's ear, always twittering away while doing your mindless work. Bigbeer said. I am Brigbeer, and all the gods and men say I am brave. I am proud to say that all the gods are enjoying their beer here. Loki said. Silence, Big Veer. You don't know you don't even know how to serve food to guests. And worse than that, I know we can find you hiding in the straw when the battles start. I'm all said. You're drunk, Loki. Drunk to the point of foolishness. Why don't you control yourself? This kind of drunkenness makes every man say more than he means to. Loki said. Silence, Heimdall. Uh, in the old days, a miserable fate was assigned to you. You have to stand all the time and then watchful all the time as the guardian of the gods. Gadi said. 
This is fun for you, Loki, but you won't be speaking as a free man much longer. The gods will bind you to the rock with the cold guts of your own son. Loki said. You know, even if the gods uh, were going to bind me to the rock with the cold guts of my own son, um, I was still the first and last on the battlefield when we fought your father, when we fought your father, Thiasu. Thati said. You know, even if you were first and last on the battlefield when the gods fought against Thiasi, you will never be welcome in any home or other place where I have power. Loki said. You had kinder words for me when you were begging me to join you in your bed, but no one expects as much when one speaks openly about such hidden shames. Then Sif came forward and offered Loki a drink of mead and said, Hail to you now, Loki. Take this drink I offer you of our good old mead. Do this rather than find fault with me among alone among all the gods and goddesses. Loki drained the drink and said, You would be unique, let's see, if you were actually uh, wary and unwelcoming to other men, but I alone knew how you were unfaithful to your husband Thor, and I was the one you slept with. Bela said, Listen, all the mountains are shaking. I think Thor is coming home. He'll close this mouth that's slandering all the gods and men. Loki said. Silence, Bela, you're Big Vir's wife, and you have plenty of other faults. There's no greater beast among the gods here tonight than you lowly milkmaid. Then Thor came and said. Where's Thor? He came. And he said. I'll do it. Silence, you sissy, or I'll let my hammer silence you instead. I'll knock your head off your shoulders, and then you'll be silent and dead. Loki said. Thor has come into the hall. But why are you making such a big show of yourself, Thor? I don't think you'll look half so daring at Ragnarok when the wolf swallows your father. Thor said. Silence, you sissy, or I'll let my hammer silence you instead. I'll throw you, I'll throw you out here into Jotunheim, and no one will ever see you again. Loki said. Probably never tell any human beings what you've done in Jotunheim. I remember when you sat trembling in a giant's glove. Didn't much look like Thor then. Thor said. Silence, you sissy, or I'll let my hammer silence you instead with my right hand. I'll beat you and break every bone in you. Loki said. I expect I'll live a long time, even if you threaten me with that hammer. You uh, brought Utgartha Loki's food bag. You thought uh, Utgartha Loki's food bag was challenge enough, and you left that contest still hungry. Thor said. Silence, you sissy, or I'll let my hammer silence you instead. I plan to send you straight to hell beyond the corpse gates. Loki said. I've spoken to the gods and the gods' sons and everything I dared to say, but because of you, Thor, that I'll leave. I know you and you alone mean your threats. You made beer, Aegir, but uh, you'll never again host a feast here. Everything you own will burn up and you will feel flames on your back. After this, Loki hid in the falls of Frenagar in the shape of a salmon, but the gods caught him. He was tied up with the intestines of his son, Nari, and his son, Narvi, was turned into a wolf. Skadi took a poisonous snake and tri tied it up over Loki. Poison dripped onto his face from its mouth. Loki's wife, Sigyn, sat there and caught the poison in a jar. But when the jar filled, she had to empty it. And when she did, poison dripped onto Loki's face. And this hurt him so badly that he trembled and all the world with him. This is what is called an earthquake. The end.